All right, what we have here is a motor that's tripping a breaker. A customer called us out because the circulation pump's not kicking on. Now we don't have a whole lot of information other than that. The breaker was tripped when I got here, so I reset it. And we're gonna kick it on and see what kind of noise or smoke it makes. So, make sure we're not touching the motor in case it's shorted out. Here we go, one, two, three. All right, motor's just humming. So, first thing we wanna check Make sure the motor shaft is not seized. That's one thing that will certainly stop a motor from getting started. So we just pop the back cover off here, and any tool, even your fingers, you can wiggle the motor shaft. If it spins freely, we, uh, we don't have a seized up motor shaft. So that leads us to the second most likely culprit, which is the start capacitor. Uh, the start capacitor is under this little hump on top here, and basically, it's a little battery that gives the start winding enough extra juice to get started. And once the motor's started, it doesn't do a job anymore. But the motor won't get started if this goes bad. Just like a car battery, they typically go bad either when it gets really hot or really cold outside. Here in the desert, we see these go bad in May and June typically. Uh, so if you're in a hot area, and your pool motor started buzzing instead of running uh, in the hotter months of the year, then it's probably a start capacitor. That's rusty, but it's going. All right, um, when you pull this capacitor out, make sure that you have the circuit breaker turned off um, in this case, we have the time clock turned off, uh, but to be safe, it's always good to turn the breaker off before you discharge this capacitor. To discharge this capacitor, before you touch the wires on it, take any tool with an insulated handle, tap across those two terminals. Um, these do store a charge, so if you touch them with your bare fingers before you discharge it, you might get a little zap. So now that it's discharged, pull these leads off, and we have our 30 microfarad start capacitor. Here I have a capacitance tester. All we're gonna do is put a lead on either end of this capacitor. And it's gonna show us what its capacitance is. You can see this one's showing zero. That tells me that this capacitor is dead. And for reference, I'm going to set this one off to the side. I'm going to grab a new one out of my tool bag here that I brought for demonstration purposes. And assuming I might need to replace one, we have another 30 microfarad capacitor. We're going to hook up these leads, one to either side. And you can see this one's reading 30.3. The rating on this one is 30 plus or minus 6% and we're well within that. So what we're going to do here is put this brand new star capacitor in the motor and more likely than not it's going to fire up and run and we'll be on our way. So again, with the circuit breaker turned off to the pump, hook these leads back up to the new capacitor. There's no polarity, it doesn't matter which post you put which wire on. There's four connectors on each of these terminals. It does not matter which one you use. One wire on one side, one wire on the other. It's as simple as that. And always make sure the lip of your capacitor locks into the grooves on this hump. You don't want that thing sliding around and shorting out while it's running. So we put this guy back in right where it came from. Secure the lid before you test it, again, so that you're not risking touching any of those hot wires. Now, we're gonna try and fire it up again, see what happens. One, two, three. There she goes. So in about five minutes and for about a $30, $40 part, uh, we got the pump going without replacing the motor. And in fact, we didn't even have to put any water in it. Now that's how you test and replace a start capacitor on a pool motor.